Hi, I'm George and welcome back to part 10 of the Horizon series. Now, last time we had a look at the prototype electronics and this time we're going to have a look at how we mount that electronics inside of its own box. We're also going to add the valve motors to the air control box. And finally, we're gonna run some bench tests and as well as doing some field tests. So let's just jump straight into it. So we first start off by putting the electronics onto one of these prototype boards or Vero boards. Now it was a one-off, so there was really no need to do a dedicated PCB. Then we fit the Pro Micro and also the level shifter so that we can talk to the Raspberry Pi. Now here we're cutting up the PCB to mount the status LEDs. And here we're soldering those LEDs in place. Next, we need to make a couple of brackets to mount everything. So this is just G10 fiberglass. Cut it to size and then do some sanding. Then we made these four brackets that'll mount everything together. And that just gets bolted together and this is how it'll go in. Then we add these standoffs for the Raspberry Pi and the controller board. Then we make this uh, metal bracket to hold the battery in place. Next we mount the Raspberry Pi power supply and that's just held on with a couple of pieces of Velcro. And now we assembled the whole thing. So a battery goes in, then this controller board, then the voltage regulator, then the H-bridge motor driver, and finally the Raspberry Pi. Then we have to do all the wiring. Here we're just crimping some connectors onto the motors, and they just get fitted into these Molex connectors. And same for the controller board. Okay, time to do a test. Now one of the motors was misbehaving, so we had to do a little bit of debugging, but it was pretty quick to find. There was one trace on the Vero board that we forgot to cut. So once we cut that, we run the test again. And this time the motor behaved itself. Here we're hooking up the servo motor for the release head. And now we'll connect up the status LEDs to test those. And those look like they're working fine as well. Good test. Okay, so now it's time to mount everything inside a box. Here we're just cutting out the access panel. So then everything gets fitted in like this. Mount the connectors. Here we're mounting the Raspberry Pi camera in a 3D printed housing. That just fits in like this. Then a waterproof switch cover. Then the status LEDs, they're in this 3D printed sun shield. And finally, the power supply for the Raspberry Pi. 
connect up the battery and that's ready to go. Now we need to secure all of the components inside the air control box. So I was mostly just drilling and screwing things in place. And then we've got a couple of chipmunks to help us out. Needed to drill more holes. This one's the access hole for all of the wires. More holes. Now we actually tap these so that we could put these uh, screws with holes in them. They allow us to pass the strings through. So here we have the vent valve. The vent valve is connected through a string to the two pressure release valves. Here is the one for the booster and here is the one for the sustainer. Now there's a bit of a slack in the line so that the braking force when it applies it to the first one doesn't happen at the same time as the second one. So there's a bit of a delay and um, it's a lot easier on the motor. So there's uh, air in the system so let's have a look how this works. Uh, and releasing pressure in 3, 2, 1. And that's a one-shot deal so once the rocket now is depressurizes we have to go back and reset it manually. So let's put some air back into the system and now if something should go wrong with the motor itself, if the battery dies or the limit switches break or there's a connection that's broken and the rocket's pressurized, we still want to be able to depressurize it. So we have a manual backup system and there's a string uh, that goes back to the launch controller uh, that we can just pull manually and that will release the pressure also. And that's another reason why we use the string and not a hard linkage is so that these two can operate independently of each other. Now we're going to fit the air inlet motor. So here we have the main air inlet motor and that's connected to this bent handle which contacts the valves uh, handle. Now you'll notice uh, that's actually kept closed by the spring. The idea here is that because the seat inside of the uh, valve is quite sensitive to over tightening, we didn't want to drive it directly with the motor uh, which would, could damage that seal. So the spring applies a constant uh, tension onto that seat um, that it's not too great. Now we can adjust the tension simply by moving the end of the spring on these screws. Um, and the other reason why we have such a long spring is it gives us a much more even force over the range of movement. So if it was fairly short, uh, you'd get hardly any force down here, but a great force at the other end. So that's the reason for the length of the spring. Um, okay, so let's have a look how this works. I'll just let some pressure into the system. And now what I've done is I've left one of the valves open because we don't have anything connected at the moment. We don't want to uh, overpressurize everything if we don't have to. Okay, so uh, there's pressure in the system now. So let's let some air in. And what we can do is we can just pulse the motor uh, to let in little bursts of air. And there it's closed again. And now we'll fully open it and that lets in all of the air and then we can close it again. Now if something should go wrong with the motor itself, we battery dies, some connections broken and the motor stuck open, we don't want to overpressurize the rocket. So there's another safety backup system. We can pull yet another string that completely disengages that motor and it locks it into place from the valve and then the spring is free to close that. So it would be like letting it go uh, and the valve will automatically shut off. Then we drill even more holes. Now these are the uh, outlet holes. These are a couple of 3D printed covers that we've made that direct the air and water coming out of the pressure release valves down underneath the air control box so that we don't flood the box with the water. And there's two of them. 
So here we're doing a full integration test. We're hooking up all the electronics and all of the air control lines together and even using the 50 meters of cat5 cable to make sure that there's no signal loss there it works okay so now we have to mount everything on this base And we also have to make a lid for the whole thing. This is just a temporary mount of a release head that we've taken out of our cluster launcher. Uh, it's only a low pressure release head, but it can be controlled electronically. So we hook everything up. And then run through a set of tests. And this was mostly for operational reasons, so that we could understand how we configure everything and operate it. Two, one, go. Here we're doing launches, and we're also trying abort situations. Then the lid gets painted as well as the base with this black waterproof paint to protect it. And here it is all mounted together. Next, it was time to go out to Whalen Reserve to one of our New South Wales Rocket Tree Club launches to test the launcher itself. Now here we're only testing it at low pressure, but still everything uh, works the same way. The operation is identical to the high pressure ones. So we're just using one of our regular low pressure rockets. And then it just gets locked in. We plug in the release head. Put the lid on. Turn the air on and it's ready to go. Three, two, one, go. And here we can see how much water splashes onto the controller. Next time we'll locate it a bit further away. So here we're doing a second test just for laughs. And you tell me when it gets up to pressure, John. Okay, John, it's just about to launch his water rocket. Keep an eye on this one. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! So the launch is pretty much ready to go. Uh, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to touch up the uh, control software to give us uh, keyboard input. The touchpad interface isn't so practical to use in the field, uh, so that'll make it a bit easier to use. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the sustainer pressure chamber and how that goes together. But anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Launching in five, four, three, two, one, go. Did you arm it? Arm it first. <laughs> okay, we'll count the countdown again. Five, four, three, two, one, go.